being 40 days tempted of the devil. So a lot of times we, those of us that know the story, we think of Jesus going up into the wilderness and he's just there fasting and praying. But in the Luke passage, it says he was there 40 days being tempted by the devil. So day after day, the devil is tempting him. And so we learn more about those temptations that uh, he was tempting Jesus. And we, we learn from the life of Jesus how we should act and how we should uh, react when the devil is tempting us. So uh, one time the devil came to him and said, if thou be the son of God. Now we know from the Bible that Jesus is the son of God, right? And he's, so the devil says, if you are the son of God, if, then command these stones to become bread. Now remember, Jesus was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. He hadn't had anything to eat. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes after 40 minutes, I might be hungry. But certainly after a few hours, I get hungry. Don't you? I mean, you have a nice meal, and pretty soon you're saying to your mom, what can I eat? I'm hungry. Can I have a snack? And then she says, don't ruin your appetite. And you're thinking, no, I can't ruin my appetite. I'm hungry. <laughs> right? And so the devil knows that Jesus was hungry. The Bible tells us that he was hungry. And the devil says, change these rocks into bread. And Jesus says, it is written. Now, in Jesus' day, they only had part of the Old Testament because the rest hadn't been written yet. The New Testament had not been written yet for sure. So everything that Jesus said was from the Old Testament. And he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And that's from Deuteronomy. And so Jesus quoted the Old Testament. And so every day we feed our face because our belly is hungry, but we also need to be feeding our spirit with God's word every day, because that is how we, how our spiritual life can survive. You know, we're all worried about how can I, how can I survive with my body? But we need to also be concerned about our spiritual life. How can we survive? It's by the word of God. Every day we need to be putting God's word in our mind and in our hearts. Okay, so that when the devil tempts us, we can say it is written. So then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him up on the top of the temple and had him look down and he says, if thou be the son of God, said that again, if thou be the Son of God. Well, we know that he is the Son of God. He says, now get a load of what the devil does. He turns the scripture around. First, Jesus used the scripture to, to refuse the devil and to resist that temptation. Now the devil says this for it is written and then he quotes a bible verse he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone and that's from the book of psalms and so now the devil is turning the bible around and trying to use the bible to tempt jesus by saying, if you jump off of here, you won't hurt yourself. God will send his angels to you. And Jesus uses the, the scriptures in the correct way. And Jesus says, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay? So the devil just keeps 
at Jesus. Jesus is hungry. And when you get overly hungry, your body gets weak. And so the devil was trying to take advantage of this situation that Jesus was in. He was hungry. He was weak. And he says, first he says, make this bread. Jump off of here and your angels will protect you. The Bible says. But he was misusing it, wasn't he? And then the third one was he took him up into a high mountain. And the devil says to him, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So the devil tried to entice Jesus by saying, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world if you fall down and worship me. We've already learned this week that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so Jesus said to the devil, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So every time that Jesus was tempted by the devil, he used the scriptures properly to resist the devil. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. You see, Jesus didn't need the temptation of the devil to have the angels minister unto him, did he? When the devil left, tempting Jesus, the angels came and ministered unto him. So this is why it is called the sword of the spirit, the word of God, because with it we can use the Bible, if we use it properly, to resist the devil, because he will use it to tempt us. Okay? He, he used the Bible, uh, the devil tried to tempt Jesus to eat the rocks and change the rocks into bread. And we learn that the bread, it'll satisfy our belly, but we need God's word to spiritually grow. You know, when you see a newborn baby, it's really sweet and precious, right? But newborn babies aren't supposed to stay newborn babies, are they? If a newborn baby does not grow, it indicates a problem, right? And then they usually have to go to the doctor. Well, when you trust Jesus as your Savior, and you know that he's living in you, and you have confessed your sins and told Jesus you're sorry for your sins, but you don't read your Bible anymore. You never come to Sunday school or church, and you're never learning more and more about God's Word and getting God's Word more and more into your heart. You're like that newborn baby in your spiritual life. And so we know that's not normal. And God's Word even says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. In other words, just keep learning God's word. Keep reading it. And uh, we'll be more like Jesus and able to resist the devil. And then he showed him, um, he took him up on the temple and says, jump off of this high place. Well, we learned the other day about the law of gravity, right? If you jump off of a high place, there's only one way you're going, and that's down. Well, most of us aren't, right? <laughs> We're here on earth. And so Jesus said, don't tempt the Lord your God. All right? And we can do that sometimes. We can say, well, I am going to jump off of here. And, and tempt God and say, well, send your angels because here I go. No, that's not the way it works. And Jesus knew that. And then the devil says, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. As if God already didn't own the whole world. Right? And Jesus says, get away from me, devil. And so that's what we want to do as well. 
we want to use our sword to resist the devil. Now, look at our armor here. We've got a helmet, we've got a shield, we've got a breastplate, we've got a girdle, we've got shoes. Those are all what we call defensive. Those are what protect us as we go into battle. They protect us so that the darts of the devil can't get us. The sword, on the other hand, is what we call offensive. That means this is what we use to fight, all right? This, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that's what we use to fight the enemy. Now, are we really dressed up as soldiers today? No. Look at us. Do we look like soldiers? No. no. And we're not really marching with our bodies into a war. No. no. But in our spirit, we are at war with the devil. And the devil uses all kinds of tricks to tempt us. Like he tried to tempt Jesus. And different things tempt different people. Maybe it is food that tempts you. Maybe it is TV shows that you like to watch that you know God would not be happy about. Or maybe it's music. You like to listen to music and you like to really dance to that music. But it's not music that would be glorifying to Jesus. Okay, so we have to look at our lives, everything we do, everything we see, everything we hear, and say, is this what will be pleasing to God? And if it's not, then we need to get in our memory God's word and say, get, get away from me, devil, because this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So whenever you're doing something, you can think in your mind, is this something that will glorify God? Okay? So defensive means protective. Offensive means that you are actually actively fighting. Okay, you're using the Bible in your heart to fight against the devil. And the Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You see how Jesus resisted him. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. The Bible says, and finally, the devil left him alone. And so when we fight against the devil with the word of God, he will also leave us alone. Now I feel greatly like I am missing something. Oh, review time. All right, so we have two Kingdom. kingdoms. The bad kingdom ruled by God. The, oh. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> that must have messed up your mind. <laughs> The good kingdom ruled by God, and the bad kingdom ruled by Satan. Right. The good kingdom is a kingdom of light, of truth, of love. And here it's ruled by God, based on truth. God is for us. The Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? God keeps his promises, and it's a kingdom of light. The bad kingdom is ruled by Satan. It's based on lies. Even when the devil was tempting Jesus, he used the Bible in a deceitful way. And people will also do that. It doesn't ever cease to amaze me sometimes when I see unsaved people on TV telling Christians how to live because the Bible says God is love. It's like that's the only verse they know in the Bible. But if they knew exactly the Bible, they would know that God is also holy and God is also just and God punishes sin. And people will all also say, how can a loving God send people to hell? 
God does not send anybody to hell. The Bible says, choose you this day whom you will serve. So whose choice is it? Ours, right? Every, just, just wait for a while, okay? It's our choice. If we choose God, we'll go to heaven. If we don't choose God, we'll go to hell. God is not sending anyone there. God did not make hell for people. God made hell for the devil and his angels. God does not want anybody to go there. God wants us to be in his good kingdom because he loves us, okay? And so we put on our armor and we learn to be strong in the Lord because we can't be strong on our own. The devil is stronger than we are, but the devil is not stronger than God. And so that's why if God be for us, who can be against us? Not even the devil. Because if we have God, we have his word, and we can resist the devil. So we want to be strong in the Lord. So each day we learn a little saying to go with our lesson, to get these in our mind. So let's just read these all together as I point with the sword. Of two, only one is true. Decide your side. Do right in God's sight. Learn to discern. Train your brain. That's the one for today. Train your brain every day. Every day. Take time out of every day to read your Bible. And if you don't know how to read, have somebody read it to you. Every day, read something out of God's word so that when you know that the devil is tempting you, you can say, no, 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 no I'm not going to do that. Okay? If you start hearing bad stuff, or somebody's trying to tell me a secret or something that I'm not supposed to know, I just go, oh, 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 oh. and then I can't hear. And we can do that with the devil. Say, no, I'm not going to listen to your lies. I'm going to follow Jesus. Right? Follow Jesus to the end. And uh, <clears throat> so let's look over here. Let's see, what do I have? A couple more minutes. Keep on the clock. You're good. Okay, yes, I have two more minutes. All right, two minutes. So if you have come to Vacation Bible School, we're going to be putting out your first cards, putting them in your box. <clears throat> so there is an assortment of different prizes at this table. None of them are the same. I have your names in here. When I pull one out, you can come pick something out. If it's piled on top, like this little notepad and pencil, go together. Okay? Okay. All right. Are you going to do that? I'm going to do that as you're cutting right now. So when I call your name, you can just come over and then take it back and put it in your bag if it'll fit. Otherwise, just set it right on top. All right, just as a reminder, listen, just to grab my Bible. If you do not, what I... What'd you do with the... I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just leftover yeah. cookies and...
opportunity decision and what's that? My decision is I am going to be a missionary doctor. A missionary doctor. Well, that's very interesting. Well, let me ask you some questions then that will help you to know, will help me to know how well you would do as a doctor. Okay, I'll try. All right, here we go. Um, what would you do if somebody fainted? Oh, that's easy. Revive them. Okay, that's, that's quite a hat you've got. Jiggly and everything. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, let's see. What if somebody had a cut on their head and they were bleeding from their head? Oh, that's easy. You put a tourniquet on their neck. Okay. Um, hmm. What if somebody had sunstroke? Oh, that's easy. You just get out of the room. Okay. Um, oh, what would you do if a dog bit you? Oh, that's easy too. You bite them back. <laughs> Uh, but this weekend, we 